Roy Monday. I go to Tuscaloosa High School, and uh, I'm from Calvary Road Baptist Church. So, where I'm going. Yeah. And tonight I'm going to be sharing my testimony with you guys. So. All right. Um, First Corinthians 10:31 says, "Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God." And I would love to say that I've lived my whole life by that verse, but we all know that's not the case. Um, life has taken me down many paths before I knew what that verse really meant. Uh, I was born and raised in Waynesville. My parents were very young. Uh, we lived in a trailer park on Ball Creek, way out there, uh, right next door to our first cousins. We had a lot of great memories there. Like the time we literally got clotheslined by a clothesline while riding our bikes across the yard. And uh, so I thought my life was great. It was awesome. Then the fifth grade comes along, and uh, my family and I moved into a new house in town. Uh, this was a time in my life when I was very shy. Didn't have much self-confidence, and uh, which was caused by some verbal abuse at a young age. This was also a time for me when I struggled making friends. Uh, this was a very pivotal point, point in my life, and it took a turn for the worst. My parents were uh, fighting constantly. Uh, alcohol, drugs, the lies, it was all part of it. And uh, growing up seeing that really causes a lot of problems to develop in your life. Um, trust issues, anger. Um, mom and dad spent a lot of time splitting up and getting back together, like both for very short periods of time. And um, I didn't ask for it, but it caused me to have to grow up at an early age. I oftentimes questioned and asked God why I had that, like why he was doing that to my family. And um, just asked, like, asked questions like if he even loved me and loved my family. And uh, every time they got back together, it seemed like it just continually got worse and worse. Um, I always felt the responsibility of protecting my little sister from all of it. And uh, I remember many times with my parents fighting, having to take her downstairs and just hide her and distract her from all the things going on, the screaming upstairs and stuff like that. And it just caused me to be very protective over the women in my life and just people that I love in general. Um, so one day in the spring of my fifth grade, of my fifth grade year, my family and I decided to go to a tent revival at Delaware Baptist Church. And uh, that night, I just remember sitting in the very back of the tent and just hearing, like, the preacher was like, I felt like he was talking directly to me. I was like, golly, this guy knows everything I've done wrong. I was like, jeez. So uh, I just remember, like, my palms were getting sweating, and like, I was just like, gosh. So I knew I had to go to the altar, and that was the night Jesus saved me. And uh, for a short period of time, Life was going great. My parents stopped fighting. Um, it was just peace. There was peace in my life. And I really thought that the decision that I made was going to change like my family's lives. But we all know that just because you change and I change doesn't mean the devil's going to stop attacking. So, um, sorry, I lost my uh, Then, for about three more years, the fighting kept continuing. And one night when I was in the eighth grade, my mom came and picked me up from one of my friend's houses. And uh, I remember getting in the car, and I knew something was wrong because she had called me before then and was like, she's like, hey, when I get there, just come back to the car and don't, like, I don't want to come in and just hurry, please. And I was like, okay. So I got up to the car and she's crying and she looks at me and she said, it's over. And her and my parents were getting divorced. And I can't tell you the peace that I felt, but at the same time, I felt so much anger because all I ever wanted was a family just like everybody else, a normal family. But with my parents being divorced, I slowly started falling off the path God had made for me. I started falling into new temptations and just all kinds of things that I shouldn't have been into. Then high school starts. I never got much attention in middle school, elementary school, but high school was a different story. I was getting attention from girls and upperclassmen who wanted to be my friends, and it was all overwhelming at the time. When high school started, I was quickly labeled as a football player jog guy. And uh, football was a huge part of my life. I had grown up loving it and wanted to be the star one day. I spent a lot of time just trying to be the football star. I spent a lot of time making that my name. And uh, it got to the point when that was all I ever wanted to talk about or do. During this time, a great guy came into my life. Uh, he's my stepdad now. His name is Shannon. And he came in and he was a peacemaker and a peacekeeper for our family. And him sharing his love for God with our whole family uh, has really helped me in the long run, for sure. 
Um, so sophomore year starts, and I was pulled up to varsity for football. Being around older guys and older people uh, just caused me to start trying new things that I shouldn't have been in, just trying new things and being tempted with different stuff. And uh, like alcohol, girls. And, and I know in the moment that all that stuff seems fun. I know that a lot of you guys are in the same situation, which is totally fine. We all go through it. But I'm here to tell you that that stuff, at the end of the day, after the party when you wake up, and after all that, it's not, it's not worth it, guys. I mean, I don't know how to explain that to you, but in the, in the long run, do you want that to be like what you remember as? And that's just all I have to say about that. But, and I've seen in my life a lot of how easily, like, like alcohol and just anything can just grab a hold of you and take a hold of you and just really destroy your life and the others around you. This carried on all throughout my sophomore year and football was becoming an item in my life. But then, the summer of going into my junior year, our youth group was going on a trip to Fort Casman. At the time, I was upset because I was missing practices in the summer, and, uh, but God really worked on me that week. I remember just feeling like I was growing closer and closer with him every day as the week went by. Just feeling that, like that, you know, the fire in your soul that you want. And, uh, I remember one night we uh, just got done with Patch and our youth group decided to go and do like a private uh, worship service in a classroom that Castle had. And uh, the music would start playing and um, I can just remember the tears start to fill my eyes and my knees. This time I was more prepared for the obstacles that I would face. Um, I was faced with an injury this year that humbled me and made me realize that I didn't have to carry on a legacy of what a great football player I was. But at the end of the day, I'm choosing the path of God and not the path that the world has laid out for me. Do I know what I'm going to be doing in the future? I have no idea. I don't know what school I'm going to. I don't know. Who knows? God only knows. So. Um, our job as Christians is to just follow the path of God and just be open and have your hearts open to Him and accept what He has laid out for you. Thank you so much.